Hello and welcome to News You Can News. I'm Lisa and I must say that it's getting really hot in Mumbai. But we are not here to discuss the weather. We are here to discuss the personal finance news headlines through the week to make sense of how they might affect your money life. Okay, so the first one I have, it's not really a personal finance news headline. It's really more like an economic uh, news headline. It says um, Fitch slashes FY23 growth forecast for India to 8.5%. Fitch is a rating agency and uh, does, um, uh, you know, along with company ratings, it does sovereign ratings. So the ratings mean whether a company or a country uh, is in a position to repay its financial dues, its borrowings. And for that, uh, something like a GDP and how much the economy is going to grow is an important indicator. Now, Fitch is reducing the GDP forecast for FY23 from its earlier projection of 10.3, which obviously was quite high anyway. So eight and a half is not a bad projection uh, in that sense. It's, you know, these things are more about expectation. What was the expectation before and what is it now? But I think expectations had scaled down anyway because of the, uh, you know, what's happening with oil prices. India is an oil importer. So importing um, so much oil, about 70 to 75 percent of our oil needs at high prices when the rupee is also depreciating can dent uh, the finances for the government. And if that happens and government spending slows down and all those mismatches happen, then yes, GDP can get affected. It doesn't really impact your money life directly. But of course, if GDP growth does slow down more than expected, then it can have an impact on things like uh, jobs, growth, demand. And we know that the major macro change is oil prices. So inflation can eat into your savings. All of those things are there and you have to watch out for it. Okay, the next one is again around markets. Uh, this says, there are two headlines actually I'm taking together. Nifty could be headed to 17,800 levels and beaten down blue chips could be first to rebound. Could be, yeah, why not? I mean, these headlines are just there to fill space. I feel we don't know whether Nifty is headed uh, in your, uh, tomorrow, let alone in a few weeks or months or whatever. Yeah, blue, beaten down blue chips. Obviously, blue chips are large cap companies uh, which, you know, have a, a good brand, a large market share, etc. Obviously, if those stocks have corrected more than required, then they will rebound because there is value in those companies. But, uh, you know, when they will rebound, how it will happen, nobody really knows. If you are getting into stock buying directly, if you are buying stocks directly, you have to do your research and there is no amount of market speculation that can make you money. And these headlines are really more speculative in nature than uh, have, you know, any real impact on your money life. Okay, next. Revenge shopping helps malls get back on their feet. Now, revenge shopping is... Um, the way the newspaper has reported this news is really from the industry's perspective because, you know, during the two years of the lockdown, uh, demand had fallen. Uh, people were losing jobs because things were not selling as much, right from food to clothes to cars to everything. Now that shopping is coming back, it does have an impact on the industry. Overall, there is a trickle down because people have more jobs, more shops are open. Uh, when those uh, shops and companies make money, then, you know, they employ more people and so on and so forth. But do not loosen your purse strings so much uh, to help out the rest of the economy that, you know, you regret going through your savings too fast. While revenge shopping is great and will make you feel great, shopping always uplifts. Um, what you should not do is go overboard on your shopping budget and eat into your savings too much because what the pandemic has taught us is that life can be highly uncertain and what you do need is your financial cushion to be there always. Okay, another headline, this is to do with mutual funds. Aditya Birla, HDFC Mutual to merge FMPs into debt funds. FMPs were these fixed maturity schemes that invested in bonds, corporate bonds mostly. Um, and they would be like a one year for a period of two years or three years. And I think they've just gone out of demand. Firstly, there isn't as much demand for corporate bonds after the whole uh, credit uh, fiasco that has happened in some cases. And also now this new product category, target maturity funds, debt funds have come into place, which 
maybe have replaced the purpose of FMPs. FMPs could be matched to your goals because they have fixed maturity, but they were not very transparent. Uh, credit quality was an issue. But with these new target maturity funds, uh, a lot of this gets resolved. And um, I think maybe just, you know, it's just one of those things where the product has uh, outlived its demand. And hence, these um, MFs are kind of merging them with a scheme that actually is an open-ended scheme. And now investors can, uh, you know, access their money at any time they want. Uh, so just something for you to know, not a very big uh, portion of the overall uh, debt fund uh, space, but still uh, an important development. Okay, next is small savings rates need to be reduced in eight, 9 to 118 basis points range. So small savings are your national savings certificate, your post office schemes, uh, Sukanya Samriddhi, all those kind of government-backed savings schemes, which give investors a slightly higher rate if you compare it to a bank fixed deposit. Anywhere between 55 to 7.5% is what you can get in small savings schemes, depending on where you are investing. Of course, remember we spoke of EPF last time, which is higher at 8.1%. Uh, the RBI is talking about reducing these rates in line with the market rates, which is not an unreasonable ask for many years small saving rates were really high and it costs the government. The government pays the interest, right? So it costs the government a lot. And uh, now with oil prices where they are, with the rupee where it is, the government's finances are a little bit shaky and uh, they will try and do as much as they can to not spend extra where they don't need to. And if these rates are, you know, out of whack with what the market rates are, then it's only reasonable for them to get rationalized. So that might happen. Uh, it just says it might happen, but we don't know yet. Okay, last thing uh, is a crypto-based uh, headline. Again, I'm seeing last time also I spoke about this uh, one uh, headline around crypto. And this time around also in the same space, in the same newspaper, in the same slot, there is a crypto-based headline and uh, an article. And then there is an advertisement for a crypto exchange. I'm wondering, is it a coincidence? Anyway, let me talk about this headline. Crypto startups offer SIP option to battle extreme price volatility. We all know investing in cryptocurrencies is a volatile game and they can uh, you know, lose or gain up to anywhere between 1% to 10% or more in a day. And uh, this can you know, unnerve investors who are putting money in this. So this SIP option is just like a mutual fund SIP where you are going to buy a little bit uh, every month and keep investing regardless of what the uh, level of the cryptocurrency is. You know, all of this is good. Yeah, uh, if you are a regular investor, in any asset, it will help you tackle volatility. But remember, crypto is still an unregulated asset, as we had spoken last week. And that doesn't change. The risks don't change. Just because you are able to average out the volatility doesn't mean that the inherent risks attached to the asset itself are different. No. So those risks remain of being unregulated, firstly. Um, and uh, also the risk of not having any income stream from that asset itself. Lastly, remember it is going to be taxed. Any gains from cryptocurrencies will be taxed at 30%. The government has also clarified that you cannot set off losses from one cryptocurrency against gains from another. So these are things to watch out for. Just because there is an SIP option doesn't mean that uh, risk is lower. Okay, that's it. That's all I have this week. Do tune in next week as well for news you can use and an analysis of all your personal finance headlines. Thank you.